and welcome back. My next guest is a retired combat wounded military soldier who's using his own traumatic, life-changing disability to help spread the word about a camp for kids with all abilities. Welcome via Skype, retired U.S. Marine Corps Staff Sergeant, Johnny Joey Jones. Hi, Joey, how are you? Hey, thanks for having me. I'm doing all right yourself. Oh my God, it's an honor to have you. I, I've read your, your, your website and I am just blown away, my friend. I am so, I got so much respect for you. I'm breaking down actually as I'm talking to you, but I've got a lot of, a lot of respect for you. You are definitely a hero in my eyes. So thanks well, for being with us. I really appreciate it. Well, I really appreciate it. And uh, I don't know if I'm a hero, but I certainly have been honored to serve my country and trying to do as much as I can now that I'm back. Mm. So tell me about your uh, experience, I guess, when you first started off with the Marine Corps. Well, I joined the Marine Corps back in 2005. Um, you know, I was in high school when 9-11 happened. I felt compelled to do something, but I didn't think that serving in the military was going to be it. Uh, and I like to tell people, quite honestly, I was just smart enough to know how dumb I was acting right out of high school, not paying a lot of attention to college or anything like that. And I had a good friend uh, suggest the Marine Corps. So I went and talked to the recruiters and uh, it wasn't a few months later I was on my way to boot camp. Um, I really, back then when the Marine Corps recruited you, they set these little plaques out that had words like judgment and discipline and responsibility uh, and all these character traits that I felt like I wanted but didn't really have in my life. So although you know there was a certain pull to serve during a time of war, more than anything, I wanted those character traits and become the man the Marine Corps said they would let me be. So uh, can you tell us exactly how you were injured? Yeah, uh, each service has a, a caveat of bomb technicians. We call that EOD or Explosive Ordnance Disposal. We all go to the same school, but each service gets to choose when and how you can go into that job field. And in the Marine Corps, it's a specialized or a critical skills operator. So it's uh, similar to, but not the same as a special forces job. Uh, there's a recruitment process and an indoctrination and so on and so forth. So it's a really small fraternity of people. Um, I was lucky enough after a few years in the Marine Corps and having already deployed to Iraq in 2007 and 8 to find my way into that job field, go to the school, and then deploy in 2010 as a team leader. Uh, and during that deployment, we had a lot going on in Afghanistan. Um, I worked about uh, 80 IEDs total during that deployment or, or roadside bombs as people uh, call them. Uh, Right. But quite honestly, what happened for me, uh, we were taking a town full of bad things and bad people. We knew that there were a lot of IED or bomb components there. Mm. There were only six of us EOD techs and about 200 Marines. And after five days of fighting to take the town um, and rendering safe about 39 IEDs, uh, the sixth morning we woke up, started to clear a building that we knew was going to be tough. Right. And uh, subsequently, I stepped on or initiated a victim-operated IED or a bomb in the ground and uh and that's Amazing. how i lost so, my leg tell me about what was the uh, the recovery like i know that must have been uh very difficult so tell us a little bit about your recovery well you know it's only as difficult as each day um a lot of people don't believe me but I, the the truth is i never believed i wouldn't walk again i had my family there to support me i had a personal responsibility to get up out of the hospital become a contributive member to society again to be a dad or or a husband one day uh, to be a son, to fulfill responsibilities. You know, I never felt like there was any part of me uh, that was just going to sit on the couch and collect a check or something like that. So for me, it was all about getting as mobile and independent as possible. I got injured August 6, 2010, and I was walking in February 2011, and I was working full-time June 2011, 10 and a half months later. Um, and I contribute a lot of that to the people that were there to support me. And the medical staff there at Walter Reed who dedicated every minute of their day of course, um, whatever of course. I needed. So I know that you work with Zach Brown. So let me, tell me a little about working with Zach Brown. And the, I guess you're doing some philanthropic efforts or to support you something. Tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, we're, we're actually embarked in quite an endeavor. So uh, part of my story during my recovery, working on Capitol Hill and then working in military nonprofits and doing some acting and other things, I developed a catalog of celebrities that I became friends with that were passionate about supporting the military, one of them being Zach Brown. And uh, when I got ready to move back to Georgia from Texas in 2014, um, or 2016, I mean, Zach offered me a job here at what we call Southern Ground. Um, you really have to see this place to believe it, but the premise is that Zach owns his own record label. Um, he supports the band. We own the, the artwork and the video production. Uh, the merchandise and all those different things or different companies and department within Southern Ground, 
And from that, we've been able to create what we call Camp Southern Ground, which is a 400 acre piece of property that Zach purchased himself, uh, signed over to the camp. And since then, we've invested tens of millions of dollars to create a state of the art camp that three and a half to four months out of the year is a place for kids to go and grow and learn and be challenged and find things they're good at and learn not only how important they are to the world, but how important their fellow campers are. Uh, and during that time, we'll, we'll do a focus with kids in the autism spectrum. Uh, and so what that means is that not necessarily all kids diagnosed with autism, but the different disorders that fall in that spectrum uh, that can go away for a weekend mm. that we can bring in and whether it's through music or our ropes course or something like that, pull right. out, yes. Right. So listen, Joey, we got about a minute left or so. I want to get over, I want to uh, ask you about this uh, get up, get over it and, and get going real quickly. What does that mean to you? Tell us. Well, that's how I got through my recovery. That's my personal mantra. Uh-huh. And uh, basically what that means is that everybody has something they get up for in the morning. It might be their family, something that's important to them. And during that time, they have something they have to get over. There's always obstacles in front of you. You just have to get over them. And then something that gets you going, something that gets you excited and energetic. And you have those three elements in your life. And if you can weigh those evenly, yeah. uh, apply the right amount of time to each one to really see how important and beautiful this life is, I think it'll help you get going every day. That's right. That's great. Listen, Joey, it's been an honor. It's been a pleasure. Lots of luck to you. And please let me know if there's anything I can do for you. Let me know. It'll be a pleasure. Well, thanks for letting me come on. I really appreciate it. Thanks for all the kind words. All right. Take care. Okay, guys, still ahead. We're breaking down everything you need to know about wine. Stay tuned. Yeah, like I